This piece of cheese has become mouldy. Moulds are fungi, related to mushrooms and toadstools, and may be found on food, leather and other things left in a damp, still air. They grow very rapidly, and this speeded up picture shows a three days growth of mould on cheese. Now watch a growth of mould on an apple. This kind is called pin mould. The mould actually took about a week to grow, but the rate has been speeded up in the film. This piece of glue has a similar but coarser mould growing on it. Again, the growth has been speeded up. Here is the same coarse mould growing on porridge. Notice the round heads on the mould. One of the heads is pointed out here. Looking closer at this head, you can see it is dark in colour because it is ripe. If a ripe head is squeezed, an enormous number of little things fastened together in a sticky mass are jerked out. These are called spores, and each can later grow into a mould just as a seed grows into a plant. The spores begin to break away from the mass and separate. When separate, they can be scattered or blown away. Here is a single spore, very highly magnified. It is photographed so that you can see how it is built. A hard outer covering round a mass of living matter or protoplasm. The active movement in the protoplasm of the spore is greatly speeded up and suggests that important changes are happening. Here is the same spore, differently lighted under the microscope, so that you can watch its growth. A very fine tube grows out of it here. This tube, like the spore, has an outer wall which keeps the fluid living substance together inside. This growth took about an hour. Looked at from further away, you can see that the tube grows to form a branching mass of mould. These branches are the body of the mould. There is a great mass of these branches from a single spore. Branches that look faint are penetrating into the food on which it grows and nourishing the whole growth. Look at this closer view of the branches with a speed magnified a hundred times. Inside, the living matter is moving quite fast. The branches of the mould are drawing nourishment from the substance over which they are spreading. In their search for food, besides spreading out, the branches of the mould grow thickly both on top and inside the substance on which they are feeding. In this way, they make a thorough search for nourishment. If well fed, the branches continue to grow. After a certain amount of growth, they begin to produce the same kind of round heads full of spores that we saw at first. The heads stand out like white dots above the branches. In close view, we can see how a new head is produced. A branch of mould rises, and at the end, it swells to become a head. Notice the thick wall of the head. Looking down on the mould, the head looks like a little white dot, pointed out here by an arrow. Here it is again, closer still. As it ripens, it gradually gets darker. You remember that when the spores are ripe, if the head is touched or squeezed, the sticky mass of spores will come out. Now again the spores will begin to grow into branching mould.
Because they are sticky, a group of freshly ripened spores often get smeared onto some substance that will nourish them. These spores have been smeared onto a moist nourishing substance at a favorable temperature. The branches of mold spread rapidly. But spores are not always smeared onto substances. For instance, here is a clump of spores. The spores on the outside begin to grow and a fringe of branches appears round the clump. There are two kinds of this mold. They look exactly alike, but we distinguish them by calling one plus and the other minus. If two pluses or two minuses meet when growing, they just grow across one another as they are doing here. The arrow shows one place where they are crossing each other. But if the branches of a plus mold meet those of a minus mold, they tend to pair off and join together. By this pairing off, the branches of the two different kinds of mold produce a kind of spore, much larger than the spores formed inside the heads. This is called a resting spore. If you watch this diagram, you can see this resting spore being produced. The living matter of the branches of the plus mold and the minus mold joins together. Portions at the end of each branch divide off and join into one large mass. This is a resting spore. The mold branches round the resting spore die away and disappear, releasing the spore. It can stand dryness, cold and heat better than do the ordinary spores. The resting spore usually remains unchanged for a time. Then, if it is moistened, a single tube may grow from it. And a head will develop at the end of the tube. This is a head which contains spores that will be scattered and produce a branching mold in the ordinary way. All the branches from the spores grown from one resting spore are either all plus or all minus. And so, by producing millions of spores which germinate quickly on moist substances, the pin mold makes sure that its race will not die out.